The reason your crit struggles did more than 2 times damage against Arcanine is because you were at minus 2 attack, and crits ignore any stat debuffs. 3410, a critical hit also ignores all negative stat changes on your Pokemon, and all positive stat changes on the opponent's Pokemon starting in generation 2. Crits ignore stat changes, which is why you manage to beat Blaine. Hahaha, <laughs> word you fucking dumbass. Why do you even play Pokemon if you don't know crits ignore stat changes in generation 3? You're a fucking dumbass and you shouldn't be allowed to do these challenges because you know nothing. Hahaha, <laughs> fucking loser. Get the fuck away from my platform. I fucking know. Lately people have been commenting this on my Sunken video and it's so frustrating to me. Like, watch the entire video before you comment something like that. I correct myself for this mistake at 4431, but no one seems to notice and I just comment this instead. While editing the video I made the decision to put it at the end of the video, because it would've fucked up a lot of the editing work I had already done at that point if I put that part at that point in the video. So please stop commenting that, I fucking know. Anyway, welcome to this video. Before I even begin, I want to thank you guys so much for the recent support on this channel. I recently surpassed 100 subscribers and my song current video is rapidly going up to 2000 views. I have no idea how this happened, I have no idea how long this will keep going, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the support recently and that's exactly why I'm making this 100 subscriber special. Lately a lot more people have been commenting under my song current video and that got me the idea for this video. So I wanna shout out user Harkness, if that's how it's pronounced. His comment contained a lot of constructive criticism, which I really appreciate, but one particular part of his comment was what really got my attention. Because he said, as an end would have been nice if you had tried playing with Pokemon's EVs, as though you had 22 max and say attack and speed, which wouldn't be so much cheating as just saving the time and effort. As soon as I read this comment, I was like, I have never actually thought of this. What if I do manipulate my Sunkern's EVs? Can I actually beat this game? As soon as I started I already ran into problems because I had no idea how to manipulate my existing Sunkern's EVs. I decided to just activate a bunch of cheats, spawn in a level 1 Sunkern encounter and just catch it and train its EVs myself. I made it a lonely nature which is plus attack minus defense and I decided to maximize its attack and special attack in terms of EVs. This meant giving this little thing 10 proteins, 10 calciums, and after that I needed to defeat a bunch of Ekans and Mankeys for the attack EVs, and then a bunch of Oddishes, if that's what the plural of Oddish is, in order to maximize its special attack EVs. Doing this got me up to level 28, but rather than getting the other 72 levels legit, I just decided to spawn in a bunch of rare candies to save myself some time, because I'm not gonna put the training in the video anyway. So there you have it, another level 100 Sunkern. While comparing the manipulated Sunkern with my original Sunkern, I noticed it had a way higher attack and a way higher special attack because of the manipulation. However, its speed was almost cut in half and its defense and special defense were also horrendous. I didn't really feel like the 81 speed was necessarily a problem because I figured the boosted attack and special attack were worth the trade-off. Then we went back to the part where we ended the last video. Blaine's Arcanine. This time my struggles were doing way more damage because of the boosted attack stat and I knew it was only a matter of time before Blaine's Arcanine would miss a hit. After that all I needed was a singular struggle crit and it would certainly be defeated. It took me a few resets but after at most 5 minutes Arcanine missed its move and I got a crit immediately afterwards. Blaine was defeated and I was already further than I was in my previous video. After rescuing Lostel from the woods we moved on to our final gym battle against Giovanni. And honestly this battle isn't even worth mentioning. Giovanni's team consists of mostly ground types and none of his Pokemon really stood a chance against my Giga Drains before and now with my boosted special attack because of the EV training it was even easier for me to defeat this guy. Every Giovanni fight in this game with Songkern has been so goddamn easy. It's actually pathetic that he calls himself the leader of Team Rocket honestly. Then before attempting to defeat the Pokemon League there was one final difficult battle left. The battle against our rival after defeating Giovanni. And this is where I really started to discover the flaws of my EV training. Like I mentioned earlier, my speed was almost cut in half. And because of this low speed, Sunkern was slower than a lot of Pokemon I was yet to face, both against Gary and in the Pokemon League. And this problem already showed against Gary's first Pokemon, a level 47 Pidgeot. 
This Pidgeot easily outsped me and used Wing Attack, which did a fuck ton of damage. And despite my Giga Drain doing almost half HP damage, due to Pidgeot's terrible special defense stat, this would still be a problem in later fights, especially in the Pokemon League. On top of that, after this Pidgeot, Gary sent out his Charizard. And just like Pidgeot, this Charizard also outsped my Sunkern. Sure, I could bank on using Struggle, which would do more damage. Sure, I could bank on Pidgeot using Feather Dance instead of Wing Attack in order to not take any, any damage. Sure, with those things going my way, I would be able to actually survive this fight. But I just figured it wasn't worth wasting my time when I would run into the same problems later on in the game. So I started looking for solutions in order to manipulate Sunkern's EVs to my liking instead of having to train another one. It was at this point that I found this program, PK Hacks. This program was supposed to work on any generation 3 game and I watched a couple of tutorials on how to do it. But this is where I encountered another problem. I forgot where I downloaded the original ROM, but this game was called F Pokemon Fire Red and then in between brackets, Squirrels. I have no idea why the file is called Fire Red Squirrels, like what do these animals have to do with anything? I have no idea, but that's what the ROM was called. And this program, PK Hex, was not recognizing this game as an actual Pokemon game. So long story short, this game was corrupt and I would never be able to manipulate someone's EVs or anything because the game wasn't recognized by this program or any other Pokemon manipulating program for that matter. And yes, this meant I had to download another Fire Red ROM because otherwise I would not be able to manipulate a Sunkern to my preferences. So after thinking about how to divide the EVs for a while, I spawned in this Sunkern. The reason for these particular EVs is because of one thing. Gary's Pidgeot in the Pokemon League. This Pidgeot is level 59 and as far as I know, no one really knows what its actual speed is. So I was like fuck it, I let Sunkern speed tie with this Pidgeot as if it has no EVs but it does have 31 IVs and then I'll see what happens. On top of that, I wanted Sunkern to have the same attack and special attack because both of them are useful as we've seen in the previous video. And after that I took the easy route and wall hacked my way through the entire game, only doing the important fights, until we got to the point where we had to defeat our rival again. This time I was faster than his Pidgeot and I got past his Pidgeot pretty easily by using both Giga Drains and Struggles. But then I got to his Charizard and all this Charizard seemed to be doing was using Flamethrower. And I didn't even have to calculate that he would probably KO me every single time, even if I was at full HP. But I was still hoping I had enough attack to be able to kill it in one hit with a Struggle Crit. However, when I finally managed to get the struggle crit on Charizard, he was left with a lot of HP and I didn't even have nearly enough attack to KO this guy in one hit. It only took me a couple of minutes to realize this Sunkern wasn't going to work and I decided to go back to the drawing board. Since Charizard had only been using flamethrower against me at this point, I was so tunnel visioned on the idea that this would be the only move he would use against me. So then I decided to start experimenting with different Sunkerns. The first thing I did was I lowered its special attack to 105 and I gave those EVs to its attack so it was at 159. But when my struggle finally crit his Charizard again, it barely did more damage than when it had 132 attack. So I went back to the drawing board again. Then I decided to try a variation where Sunkern had max special defense EVs and even a gentle nature as well. If I was able to get to Charizard with full HP, I was likely able to survive one flamethrower at the very least. But I quickly ditched this idea because as a result of this I would be very slow, plus Struggle's recoil damage would 100% KO me afterwards anyway. After this I decided to say fuck it, I gave it 252 speed EVs, a hasty nature and 252 attack EVs because I deemed Struggle to be more important than my draining moves anyway. I felt really confident about this Sunkern and it immediately showed. My very first struggle crit this Pidgeot and it was instantly KO'd because of the high attack stat. But this Pidgeot wasn't the problem in the first place anyway. Then he sent out the real problem, Charizard. I still had no idea what to do because I still only had 159 attack. And we've already seen that it doesn't KO the Charizard even with a crit. But this time on my first attempt with these stats, everything seemed to go my way. I used to struggle and saw it do almost half HP, but then I was like, okay, he's gonna use flamethrower and it's not gonna miss because it has a 100% accuracy, so I'll be dead again. But surprise, surprise, he finally used another move. He used scary face. And opposed to flamethrower, scary face only has a 90% accuracy. And like I said, everything was going my way on this first attempt and his scary face actually missed. And that wasn't the only fortunate thing because the next struggle I used was a crit and I actually KO'd the Charizard. I took zero damage against this problem. It was at this point that I thought that I was past the hardest part of this battle. But I would soon find out 
my biggest enemy was me. After this Gary sent out an execute, and this execute was very keen on using stun spore, which would make me slower than his final free Pokemon and I would not be able to survive that. But after only a couple of resets I got a crit on this execute, and execute has a very very weak defense stat, so he was not able to survive even one hit. Then he sent out Alakazam, which has such a weak defense stat, that it wasn't even able to survive a regular struggle. Then he sent out a Rhyhorn and I noticed my struggles were doing more than half HP damage. So I knew it was only a matter of a couple of resets before I would crit this guy and it would instantly KO. On my third reset I got it and Rhyhorn was defeated. Only one Pokemon left. But it was at this point that I started worrying about my HP. Despite none of Gary's previous 5 Pokemon touching me, I still lost 165 HP due to struggle recoil. And I had no idea if I was gonna be able to survive his final Pokemon. Gyarados. But then again, every Pokemon seems to have its flaws. I noticed Gyarados would start off with Rain Dance most of the time, which gave me a free hit. After that he wouldn't be able to outspeed me, because he doesn't even have the ability Swift Swim in the first place. So all I needed after this was a Struggle Crit. But then again, everything seemed to go my way in this battle. Instead of getting the Struggle Crit, Gary decided to put the dumbest move on Gyarados. Hydro Pump. Gyarados isn't even a special attacker, but hey, you do you, Gary. Hydro Pump only has an 80% accuracy, and it didn't take very long before Gyarados missed a Hydro Pump. After this I could just KO Gyarados with a regular struggle, and I was lucky enough to survive on 1 HP. 6 of Gary's Pokemon took me down to 1 HP from 201 without even hitting me. Which is really really weird to think about. But hey, a win is a win. Then before we arrived at the Pokemon League, I decided to empty the PP of Endeavor and Synthesis because I figured we were not going to use that in these battles anyway. Then we went on to the first Elite Four member, Lorelei. And even though all of her Pokemon know Ice type moves, this battle was easier than you might think. First she sent out the Dugong. This Dugong took more than half HP damage from a single Mega Drain and I figured it was worth it to just tank one Ice Beam and KO it afterwards because my draining moves would get the HP back that I lost anyway. So after two Mega Drains Dugong was down. Next up was Slowbro which turned out to be a bit of a pain in the ass. I used a Giga Drain on Slowbro and it actually did a lot of damage but it did so much damage that Lorelei would use a full restore the next turn so I decided to go with Mega Drain instead. Mega Drain did a little over half HP damage which was perfect but Slowbro would either use Yawn which would make me fall asleep the next turn or he would use Amnesia after which I would not be able to KO it even with a Giga Drain. So because of this I decided to just reset until I got a Mega Drain crit and after only a few resets I finally got the Mega Drain crit and Slowbro was instantly KO'd. But like I said earlier my draining moves would get me back the HP I lost against Dugong and I was already back at full HP. Then she sent out the Lapras and this wasn't a problem at all. I only needed 3 Mega Drains to KO it while tanking an Ice Beam in the process which I was perfectly fine with. However after this I forgot to make a safe state, which put me back at the point where I was about to fight the Lapras. On my first Giga Drain I got a crit and I actually moved on to full HP. Next up was Jinx and Jinx has a very decent special defense. My Giga Drain wasn't able to do more than half HP damage and I knew I needed a crit at some point. Luckily Jinx was kind of helping me in this battle by using Lovely Kiss, which only has a 75% accuracy. After a few resets I immediately got a Giga Drain crit, Jinx missed Lovely Kiss, Lorelei used a full restore and I got another Giga Drain crit immediately afterwards. After this I only needed the regular Giga Drain and Jinx was KO'd. Then Lorelei's final Pokemon was a Cloyster and Cloyster only took a single Giga Drain to KO which made it the easiest opponent in this battle. All I had really needed to win this fight was a crit against Slowbro, a crit against Lapras, two crits against Jinx and a lovely kiss miss against Jinx. That doesn't seem too hard, right? Next up was Bruno. Bruno led off with a level 51 Onyx, which I was able to KO in a singular Mega Drain. Then he sent out his Hitmonchan, and I noticed I ran out of Giga Drains. My Mega Drains weren't doing any damage, so I decided to use a Max Elixir on Giga Drain mid-battle. Because of this, Sunkern had to tank a Sky Uppercut, which it did very easily, and after this I was fortunate enough to have Hitmonchan miss its Rock 2, so I could easily KO it with 2 Giga Drains and a Mega Drain. Next up was Hitmonlee, which didn't really cause me any trouble. Despite his Mega Kicks bringing me down to 57 HP, I only needed 2 Giga Drains and a Mega Drain to KO him on my first try. But then we got to what I deemed the real problem in this battle. Machamp. Machamp is such a bulky Pokemon that I knew my draining moves would not be able to do shit. But then, once again, the game decided to help me out. In this battle, Machamp uses the move Cross Chop. And Cross Chop only has an accuracy of 80%, which I would be able to use to my advantage. I knew if I reset enough times, he would eventually start missing Cross Chops, and I would be able to KO him without even taking a single point of damage. It took me quite a while, but after resetting numerous times, I finally got what I wanted. I used a Mega Drain and Cross Chop missed, which put me at a point where I felt confident enough that I could survive one Cross Chop. After my second Mega Drain, Machamp used Cross Chop, and I was left on 3 points 
points of health, which was more than enough. Then I decided to just use a Giga Drain because I knew a crit would KO it and my luck this run didn't run out yet and I actually got it. With the biggest threat out of the way, Bruno only had one Pokemon left, which was another Onyx. Just like his first Onyx, it was not able to survive a single draining move and Bruno was finally defeated. Next up was the Poison Type Elite 4 member, whose name is incredibly annoying to pronounce, so I'm not even gonna bother. Anyway, she led off with a level 54 Gengar. I don't think she really expected this Sunkern to do more than half HP damage with a struggle, so she made her Gengar use double team, which I could easily take advantage of. With her Gengar only being at plus one evasion, I was easily able to go through it with a struggle and I KO'd her Gengar without any problems. But then her next Pokemon turned out to be a real problem, because her next Pokemon was a level 56 Arbok. And I know what you're thinking, Arbok isn't that great, which is very true, but in this battle it turned out to be very annoying. My struggles weren't doing much and even when I got a crit, I was barely able to kill 80% of its health. And I really needed that crit to insta-kill, because Arbok was continuously using Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb is a very annoying poison type move, because not only does it have 90 power, but it also has a 100% accuracy, so I wouldn't be able to bank on it missing. I kept resetting and trying to get Arbok to use another move, but this Arbok just wanted to use Sludge Bomb all the time. After about half an hour of resetting, Arbok finally used something else. Arbok used Screech, which I was very happy with because it's a non-damaging move obviously. And thus I knew it was possible to defeat this Arbok without taking any damage. After a few more minutes of resetting it finally happened. I used the struggle and Arbok Screech missed. After that I used another struggle and I actually got a critical hit, which was more than enough to finally KO this annoying Pokemon. Then her second Gengar showed up, which was 4 levels higher than the previous one. Even though my struggles weren't doing nearly as much damage as on her previous Gengar, because of Arbok's Intimidate, this was still a very easy fight. The reason for this was that Gengar was using Hypnosis, and this only has a 60% accuracy, and thus it was very easy to capitalize on this. After only a few resets I got what I wanted. I used the struggle, Gengar used its 60% accuracy move, and then I got a struggle crit immediately afterwards. What was supposed to be the strongest Pokemon was already down and I thought I had it in the back at this point. But once again I was completely wrong. Next up was her Golbat, and her Golbat had the moves Poison Fang and Air Cutter. No matter how many times I reset, those were the two moves her Golbat was using. Poison Fang has a 100% accuracy and Air Cutter has a 95% accuracy. On top of that, my struggles weren't doing shit because Galbat has a very decent defense stat and thus I knew this was gonna be fucking annoying. After thinking about what to do for a long time, I realized the only option I had was to bank on Air Cutter missing, which is a 5% chance. But hey, 5% is better than 0%, right? So I kept trying. Funnily enough, it only took me 3 minutes of resetting before I got what I wanted. I used the struggle and Golbat missed its 95% accuracy move. After that I used another struggle and I hoped Air Cutter would miss again, but I didn't need it because once again, just like on the other two Pokemon, my struggle crit and Golbat was KO'd. Her final Pokemon was also her weakest Pokemon, Haunter. And just like her level 58 Gengar, Haunter was using Hypnosis, but after just 3 resets, Haunter decided to use Curse instead and end the battle for me. This meant 3 out of 4 Elite 4 members were defeated. Then we moved on to our final Elite 4 member, Lance. Lance is not only the coolest Elite 4 member, but I also figured he would be the most difficult one. Before even trying to defeat this man, I decided to scout what Lance was doing, because I knew Lance had a Gyarados and an Aerodactyl, which I could use my draining moves on. And luck was in my favor once again, because Lance started with a Gyarados, and after KOing Gyarados, he did indeed send out his Aerodactyl. So I decided to use an Elixir on my Giga Drain to at least get out of the Gyarados and Aerodactyl fight with a lot of HP, because I knew Dragonite was coming up at some point. After that, I decided to start trying. Gyarados was an absolute joke and it only took me 3 Giga Drains to KO him on my first try and Aerodactyl wasn't necessarily a problem either. I had to reset a bunch of times because Aerodactyl kept using wing attack but I had already noticed that just like Gary's Charizard, Aerodactyl also wanted to use Scary Face on me for some reason and I decided to just keep resetting until Scary Face missed. After Aerodactyl missed its scary face, I knew all I needed was a Giga Drain crit and it didn't take me very long until I finally got it. This meant that after two of his Pokemon I was still at full HP and I was actually very happy with how things were going. But then he sent out the biggest threat of this entire battle. His bulky ass fucking Dragonite. Even though everything worked out as expected and I emptied my Giga Drain just in time, my struggles were doing absolutely no damage. Even with a crit I would probably need 3 crits in a row to KO this and Dragonite had all the time in the world to actually attack me. 
On top of that, I couldn't bank on Dragonite missing its moves because Dragonite has Wing Attack, Dragon Rage, Outrage and Safeguard in this battle, which all have a 0% chance to miss. It was at this point that I rage quit for a couple of days because I had no idea what to do. I reset so many times and nothing came of it, Dragonite just KO'd me every single time. But I really wanted to finish this video, so I came back after a couple of days. And then I finally got what I wanted after resetting for literal hours. I got a crit on my first struggle which didn't even do half HP damage and Dragonite used safeguard instead of any attacking move. Then my second struggle crit did something I didn't expect, it actually did something close to a max damage roll, which isn't usually something that happens to me and it actually KO'd Dragonite in two struggles as opposed to the three struggles I thought I needed. Apparently this little guy is capable of things I wasn't even aware of. With this problem out of the way I knew this was gonna be it, this is where I would win the battle. Because Lance's final two Pokemon were both level 54 Dragonairs and for some reason these Dragonairs were only using Dragon Rage which only did 40 HP damage to my Soundkern. I was able to KO his first Dragonair with just three regular struggles tanking a couple of Dragon Rages in between and I got lucky against this final Dragonair because I actually created on my first struggle and I was left on one point of health. And thus the Elite Four were defeated by a single Sunkern. And that leaves us with only one battle left. The final battle against Gary. Before starting this battle I already thought this was completely impossible because Gary's Pokemon were just too strong. Especially because I knew he would send out Pidgeot first and then a Charizard. But I still went in hoping for the best. But this Pidgeot immediately gave me hope. Because not only was he using Aerial Ace and Wing Attack, he also used Scent Attack on some turns. And even though it lowered my accuracy to about 75%, at least I didn't take any damage and I would be able to possibly KO this Pidgeot. After a couple of resets I got incredibly lucky. My first struggle critted Pidgeot and he used Scent Attack. After that I knew a regular struggle wouldn't be enough, so I prayed for another struggle crit and I actually got it. But I couldn't even be happy because I needed two struggle crits in a row to even KO his first Pokemon and he had five left after this. Then he sent out his level 63 Charizard and luckily this Charizard also had a flaw because Charizard used Fire Blast which has an 85% accuracy. With my struggles doing a decent amount of damage I knew I just had to bank on Fire Blast missing two times in a row or getting a crit on my second struggle. After resetting for literal hours I got the luckiest possible outcome and funnily enough there weren't even any crits involved. Charizard missed its Fire Blast four times in a row and with me hitting three out of my four struggles in those same turns I was able to KO Charizard without a single crit. His third Pokemon was Alakazam and just like in the previous battle Alakazam was still very weak. Because of the sand attack I missed my first struggle but after resetting just once I got a struggle crit and Alakazam wasn't even able to survive a single hit. It was at this point that I realized something really bad was going on. After defeating only 3 Pokemon, I had already been brought down to 65 HP just by taking recoil damage and I knew I would recoil myself to death if I kept going. I decided to check how much Giga Drain was doing and I decided I needed 2 Giga Drain crits in a row in order to have enough HP to survive this battle. Then I decided to load the safe state where I still had to defeat Lance and I had to do that tedious battle all over again, this time leaving myself with 2 Giga Drains to spare. After wasting hours on Lance again, I went to Gary and took care of Pidgeot, Charizard and Alakazam and I got to Executor with 131 HP this time. Executor turned out to be a very easy opponent. Because in this battle he was using Egg Bomb, which only has a 75% accuracy. And just like in my previous battles, I was gonna reset until this move inevitably missed. After a short period of time, I was able to get Executor to miss two Egg Bombs in a row, which got him down to less than half HP. I knew another regular struggle wasn't gonna KO him, it would put him in the red and then Gary would use a full restore, so I decided to just keep resetting until I got a crit, which honestly didn't take me as long as I thought it would. Then he sent out a Rhydon and this Rhydon was actually very annoying to defeat. Rhydon is a very defensive Pokemon and thus my struggles weren't doing anything. Luckily the game was able to help me out a little bit because Rhydon only had moves that weren't 100% accurate. He was using Rock Tomb which has an 80% accuracy, he was using Takedown which has an 85% accuracy and he was using Scary Face which has a 90% accuracy. I'm not even gonna take you through the process of how long this took, it took me way too fucking long to get this, making safe states in between. How I eventually defeated this guy was, he missed two takedowns in a row, then he missed a rock tomb and then I got a struggle crit. Resetting for this took me so fucking long, it was such a tedious task and I, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. But all this hard work was for nothing. As you can see right here, I was left on 31 points of health. And in my previous battle against Gary, just before the Pokemon League, I needed 36 points of health to defeat this Gyarados and be left on 1 HP. 
Not only did I not have 36 HP right now, Gary's Gyarados also was a higher level. And since Struggle Recoil is based on the amount of HP you take from the opponent, it would be absolutely impossible to KO this Gyarados and survive myself. This Gary fight had taken me so many hours up to this point and I really wanted to give up because it was such a fucking tedious task to do this. But I had come so close to actually beating this game with a Sunkern and I just didn't want to give up. So I decided to check how much HP I actually needed to defeat this Gyarados. I gave Sunkern a full restore and started struggling. Two struggle crits combined on Gyarados did 51 damage. And thus I was 21 HP short to survive this battle on 1 HP and beat the game. And yes, this meant I had to modify Sunkern again and beat the entire Pokemon League again. In order to get 21 extra HP, I needed to trade 84 EVs from either my attack stat or my speed stat. At this point it started to look very grim, because if I used the EVs from my attack stat, I wouldn't be able to KO anything in the Pokemon League. And if I used the EVs from my speed stat, Pidgeot would 100% outspeed me, because Pidgeot, even with 0 IVs and 0 EVs, and in neutral nature, its speed stat was still only 5 points below my Sunkern with these EVs. I figured it was all or nothing and I decided to just try it with 84 EVs taken from my speed because I needed every single attack EV. I defeated the entire Elite 4 again which took me way too many hours and then I got to Gary. And I have no idea how Game Freak even designed this game, but Pidgeot was still slower than my Sunkern, which meant he very likely has 0 IVs, 0 EVs and a neutral nature. Which is absolutely incredible to me because this makes the game even easier than I thought it was. My Sunkern was still able to outspeed everything Gary had and I came back to his Gyarados with 52 HP. My first crit did a little less than last time and brought me down to 24 HP. Gyarados missed its Hydro Pump and after a couple of resets I finally got my second struggle crit and I was left on 1 HP. Just as predicted. And that's it. I had defeated the Pokemon League with a Sunkern. It is actually possible if you modify Sunkern's EVs and IVs. Who would have thought this little thing would eventually end up with 84 HP EVs? Who would have thought this little thing would be able to get anything done at all? I certainly didn't. And to add to that, many of you have been commenting my rules were too strict. I should have been using items, I should have been using growth, I shouldn't have been too harsh on myself. But do you even realize what you're saying? Lately many of these Pokemon challenges have been popping up and in all of them you know what's going to happen. They're going to beat the game and they mostly don't even need a level 100 Pokemon. I mean I've seen this guy play Pokemon Crystal with just a Sunkern and he even beat Pokemon Trainer Red with Pokemon that are level level 73 to level 81 and he didn't even need to get Sunkern to level 100. If you allow items, if you allow stat enhancing moves the games just become too easy and you're just making the video for views rather than actually challenging yourself. One guy also commented, I wish you would have used more tactics instead of just using brute force to get through these battles. That's also something I completely disagree with. Using struggle, using my draining moves and waiting for their flawed moves to miss is actually using Sunkern's real weak strength. It's not using anything that helps Sunkern, it's just using Sunkern's strength. Instead of using swords or guns, he's just using his bare fists. And that's what counts in my opinion, that's what makes this challenge a real challenge. The only reason for making these rules so strict is that I wanted to see what Sunkern was really capable of, instead of just grabbing easy views just like everyone is doing on this website. One thing I do want to point out is that this isn't the only way to actually beat the game with Sunkern. My previous Sunkern video had one comment that said, could have used Ingrain to help with struggle. And you are absolutely correct my man. If I kept 1pp of Ingrain and I used it at the start of Gary's battle, I would probably have plenty of HP to survive my struggle recoils. So I just want to say that's a very clever comment and I didn't actually think of that. But when you commented this I had already recorded this video so I, I did not apply that tactic. That being said, once again a big shout out to Hawkness for suggesting this to me and making this actually possible to do. I never expected to complete this challenge with perfect IVs and EVs because Sunkern is dead shit. But this little thing actually managed to pull it off and I'm proud of it. Anyway, this is where I'm gonna end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the recent support, the subs, the views, everything. I'm very very grateful for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video then definitely leave a like rating. If you liked it even more then definitely hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in my next video. I'm gonna take a break right now because I'm tired of editing and I'm tired of playing Pokemon Fire Red with just a Sunkern for way too many hours. Later.